Yes. The triad of power, however you want to define it, in terms of titles, is programmed to create their own human 3.0. This version will be predicated on the convergence of technology, in support of biological enhancements, that make the human vessel even more of a welcoming environment for the functional implants. The goal is to make an infinite human on the earth plane. Infinite by virtue of immortality. The fusion of human and technology or what some call transhumanism, is the goal. So, Human 3.0 for the Triad of Power is very different from Human 3.0 SI, as envisioned by the wing makers. You see, transhumanism is separation. It says we are frail, weak, finite, brutish, diseased incomplete. All of these ideas for technological implants and cognitive enhancement were parts of the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization, ACIO agenda. The ACIO was building Human 3.0? Yes, certain key aspects of the transhumanist model. Not the SI version. You see, the whole idea of transcending, is linked to the inception point of separation. It is the I am supreme model. It says, the human vessel can be, and should be, enhanced in such a way that the functional implants can live forever. There are several things missing, according to the wing makers. 1. The unconscious mind cannot contain the data streams of a continuous species, and 2. The search for who we are, as the true source of life, will only be further obscured by technological enhancement. The realization of I am, we are, is not a technological realization, nor is its manifestation accelerated, by, or through technology, at an individual level. It is a self-learning and behavioral process. Nothing more, nothing less. So transhumanists want to transcend human suffering, ignorance, and mortality through technology, and the ACIO was providing some of the technology to do this, but who would have access to the technology? The elite, of course. It would only accelerate and accentuate the separation. It is simultaneous empowerment and disempowerment. The economic models for the transhumanist diffusion, as it was called in the Labyrinth Group, were not widely considered. The incunable being the only exception. You mean they actually wanted to build a plan that made the transcending technologies available to everyone? They looked at it from two angles. One, if the technology could be introduced at birth, it would mitigate the cost issues of healthcare and education, offsetting diffusion costs. But it would have to be a government-implemented service. No private company could secure sufficient trust. So a critical component was to make the United Nations the credible world organization that could introduce transhumanism to the global stage. The second angle was to allow class distinctions and free markets to eventually make the technology irresistible to everyone, and then allow government subsidies to bring down the cost sufficiently to enable its dispersion. All of this sounds very altruistic, but the quality of the technologies would be variant. Elite classes would be able to secure higher quality implantations coupled to more responsive genetics. This would simply be a human civilization, that would be attempting to purge discontent and disobedience, in favor of participation in a ruled system of government, by elite transhumans. Technology will evolve from external and personal, to external personal, to integrated personal, to internal personal. Transhumanism is the last phase, and it is the phase that the elite are moving to. The internal personal is based on exactly the same paradigm of what is now the human condition, namely, humans have a programmed interface that's integral to their human body, and is powered by the infinite source of which they truly are. Humans are unwittingly trying to be unknown to themselves. It's part of the program, according to the wing makers. Humanity will play God to itself. It will try to engineer a better human and a better civilization. It will do this because it can imagine how humanity can save itself through simple behaviors, and the realization that these behaviors can make. They will do it because they are programmed to become integrated with technology. This is the path that the wing makers seek to avert. They write that human beings are complete if they can step out of their consciousness frameworks and realize what is actually powering their systems, their artificial realities, their programmed existence. The integration of technology internally will only make this realization more difficult. I think you said on Saturday that there were prophecies of a synthetic race overtaking humanity. This sounds like what those prophets saw. Fifteen felt the same way. Fifteen is the genius leader of the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization ACIO in the Labyrinth Group. He never assumed that they were off-planet aliens. 
These prophets could have seen human 3.0 transhumanists in some distant timeline and assumed they were alien. What about the military force? As you can imagine, this is where it will be tested first. There is a whole field of psychological technology that has laid the groundwork for the real internal technologies to flow into the military. It will be released there initially, so it can be properly defended for testing purposes. Once it's proven there, it will converge with the integrated personal technology programs of the corporate elite. When you say integrated personal, what do you mean exactly? Miniaturization of the technology will enable it to adorn the body. It will not be internal yet, but it is part of the human body, like clothing, glasses, watches, and jewelry. Bear with me, but let me see if I have this straight. Human 1.0 was a creation of a godlike being. No. Anu is the same as us, or the Atlanteans. He was no more intelligent or godlike. He was deceptive. That is the only distinction. Okay, but Anu created Human 1.0, and then found them to be too similar to his own capabilities, and feared they would one day figure out that they were Atlanteans, enslaved by the Anunnaki. And he was worried about the consequences of that discovery. So, he wiped them clean with the planetary flood. According to the Wing Makers, the flood was one part of the extinction program, but there were also nuclear weapons that were discharged on the planet, most of which have been explained away as meteorite impacts. But the Wing Makers write that these were advanced weapons used against human populations that had avoided the flood. Okay. In whatever way human 1.0s were eliminated from the planet, they were replaced by human 2.0, and these included upgrades like self-reproduction and more advanced programming. And central to this programming was the notion that Anu was God, and would return to his creation. Correct? Yes. And the next upgrade to human 2.0 branches out like a fork in the road. One version of human 3.0 goes down the path of technology integration, or transhumanism. The other version, 3.0 SI, is a more organic process of using behaviors to support this process of becoming a human 3.0 or sovereign integral, and then becoming part of a network of these sovereign integrals. Is that correct? You have the general idea, yes. And the triad of power wants human 3.0 to go down the path of technology integration, because that is how they are programmed, to emulate their god, Anu. Right? Yes. So it's kind of like humanity sits at a crossroads. On the one side is the triad of power, that is programmed to develop human 3.0 as a, a cyborg, I guess, and the other side is the future existence of humanity urging us to do it internally, one person at a time, through a behavioral process. I guess the part that's missing for me is the role of the grand portal, which remains unclear. I thought it was a technology that proved the existence, the irrefutable scientific existence of the human soul. How does that figure into this? There are humans here who are designers of the new unconscious mind, that will bridge human populations everywhere on the planet, to feel and express equality and oneness. It will connect humanity and the I am, we are, consciousness, instead of the separation consciousness. It will not be based on hierarchy. The deception is coming down. One of the things that was never disclosed in the materials, including my previous four interviews, is that certain information was to be withheld. Some information was even veiled to not raise the ire of the triad of power. This information, this interview, will not be disclosed in the same timeline as the previous four. Why? The designers of the new unconscious layer of the human 3.0 are on the planet now. They are doing some of the preparation required to move humanity, who will be sitting at the fork in the road in the next 40-50 years, to choose the I am, we are, path. So I can't release this interview? No. When it's time, I will contact you. You said some of the information was veiled. In what way? The wing makers will only release some of the information now, in 1998. That is the information that will not feel too revolutionary. Too radical. It needed, in their own words, to cross into the human interface and activate a willingness to listen to their voice. For example, they used the term wing makers to describe themselves, knowing it would have a connection to the angel construct. But you said the wing makers were a future representation of human beings, presumably, from this disclosure, version 3.0. Right? Yes, but there is programming within the human interface, where the functional implants are networked as a system, that will to mount certain information. A person will hear it, but they will not act on it. They will hear it, but they will object to it. They will hear it, but they will not share it. 
All of these programs were created, not originally, but they can be upgraded. The program can be updated with new instructions. It makes cracking into this reality, exposing it for what it truly is, a very difficult proposition. This is why it requires a degree of stealth. The deception is so thick and opaque in this reality, that the ones who are trying to come into the prison and create a crack in the wall, they also have to use a form of deception. Why? The programming, Sarah. If the pure state information was given out, and it contradicted everything that people have been told to believe, if it was the literal reverse of what was logical and acceptable in this world, who would listen? The wingmakers needed to awaken certain people to bring them inside their information field, to warm them up to the truth. It has to be done in degrees for the vast majority of people. What about me? You are not among the vast majority, but then you're only getting a taste of it. Does everyone within the labyrinth group know this, too? Yes, to varying degrees. But they were going down the transhumanism path. Did this information change their mind? No. That's really why I'm here. You just said I'm only getting a taste of it, so there's still more materials that will be released later? Yes. But you're not going to tell me when, right? Correct. As intelligent and aware as the labyrinth group is, why didn't this information change their minds? I had the benefit of having direct interactions with the wing makers. None of my peers did. This was the difference in my willingness to act on the information, and not simply consider it as a contradiction to my invested reality. This is fucked up, isn't it? What part? All of it. It's all fucked up and we did it. Whatever it is, it's important to know what's behind the deception, to look with sober eyes on the truth. It may not be a beautiful picture to be sure, but how else do you realize your own truth, until you know the truth of the big picture? So, however screwed up it seems. It is an inception point for the individual to redefine themselves. Would you rather stay in the illusion of a soul, in a human body, that will be saved by God, ascend into heaven and hang out with angels who strum harps? That whole idea is repulsive once you know this. That picture is based on separation, selfishness, lack of empathy and understanding. Or, you can simply say it's all a big illusion, including the notion that we are infinite beings, and that when you die, you're done. The part of this new picture that is promising is that we exist infinitely, despite the fact that we have been suppressed and enslaved. We also can play a role in supporting this redefinition of the human being, through our thoughts and behaviors. And maybe most importantly, we have the wing makers, our future selves, providing us with evidence that I am, we are, prevailed. When I first read these materials, these were the things that provided some sense of hope, and I share them with you, for what it's worth. Thanks. All of the things that you told me in the first four interviews, with this new information, does it change it? Yes. Everything is affected by this. Give me an example. Sunday night I mentioned LERM or the light encoded reality matrix. LERM is what the labyrinth group thought was God, in terms of proof. But what was really discovered was the essence of Anu, and how he operates in this reality, as an all-encompassing observation field, that is inside our consciousness interface to this reality existence called Earth. LERM is Anu projected. What about ETs? Don't they know about this and can't they intervene and save us from this situation? Remember, everyone inside our universe is part of this deception, whether they know it or not. There are four classes of beings. One, those who know the deception and are actively supporting it. Two, those who know about the deception, but are unwilling to do anything about it. Three, those who don't know the deception and are unknowingly supporting it. And four, those who know about the deception and are actively trying to step out of the deception, and engineer a process for everyone else to do the same. That's it. It doesn't matter if the being is physical or non-physical. Everyone falls into one of these four categories, everywhere in our universe of existence. The beings in group 3 are waking up. Some of them understand that the deception in one part of the universe infects all. It requires corrective action. It requires collective understanding to ensure that it will never happen again. How can everyone in this universe be a part of this deception? I don't understand. Our entire universe is created. I'm not saying it is the universe. I'm saying that what we call the universe, as far as we can observe, is part of the hologram implanted within our consciousness framework and human interface. Our mind consciousness established the spatial temporal relationships of everything we see, and as I said, this is part of our program. And this includes the universe. 
Why do you think that our best minds on the planet cannot define consciousness, let alone the subconscious and unconscious mind? It is programmed this way. Anu did not want us to figure it out. We'll look at neural information and decide it can be sliced a thousand different ways, but it still doesn't explain how it's experienced. As Aristotle said some 2,300 years ago, to be conscious that we are perceiving, is to be